can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, so my name is Virgil Hare. I am the founder of Indota. Uh, Indota is a magazine that caters to the prison population and we do music distribution to the prison population as well. That's nice. That's interesting. So how long have you been in business? Uh, we started last year in October. Um, yep, October is our first, uh, 2021 was our, uh, was our first month in business. So we've been in business for a year now. Oh, that's cool. So what inspired you into this journey? Yeah, so <clears throat> um, back in August 2016, I ended up catching a case for uh, breaking and entering. I ended up doing three years in Michigan Department of Corrections, which is a prison facility. And they were like, uh, the, the inmates were like passing around pictures, right? But the pictures were of like poor quality. So um, they had like pictures of cars, girls, houses, but uh, what they were doing was they were sneaking into the uh, law library and making copies of them, selling the copies. And the copy quality was terrible. So that inspired me to create, when I get home, to create a magazine um, so they can see uh, what people are doing in society as far as, you know, buying real estate, um, the new cars, new fashions, to keep them, um, to keep the inmates updated so when they do come home, it won't be such a shock. How did the case went, the case with you? The uh, the prison case? Yeah. I ended up getting, <laughs> I'm getting convicted of it. So yeah, I did three and a half years in Michigan Department of Corrections for it. Okay. So have you been able to partner with other companies or investors? No, yeah, we, we talked to a few people. Um, so we talked to B-Stars. B-Stars is a, a website that allows anyone, anyone from anywhere in the world to sell beats. Uh, we talked to them. Uh, we've talked to um, Master P, his people reached out to us. Um, they were interested in looking at the magazine and seeing what they could do with it. So yeah, we do have a lot of things in the pipeline. Uh, we also work with a lot of uh, independent artists as well that just want to get their music on inside the prison system and you know get something in the magazine so people can see like, hey, you know, such and such dropped the album. Let's check it out in the JPEG kiosk and things like that. Yeah, that's cool. So have you been able to collaborate with the prison officers? Well, it's difficult. So like. Every state has different uh, rules for what they allow in, right? So like we have a hard time with like Florida and Texas. Like they, they don't want the, the, the women in the magazine to show like any skin, right? They, they want them like fully covered up in coats and stuff like that. Um, the same thing with Florida. And it's like, they, they're saying like the gang population is real bad. So like, a few pictures we had girls just doing like the peace signs and the prison part the prisons to say hey that's a that's a gang sign so oh. they block our magazine so um, um what prisons have you been successful with so every everywhere outside of texas florida and dc um those are three we have uh the biggest issues with everyone else is fine we uh michigan ohio new york california New Jersey, um, they, they they're they're really loving the magazine. Those are those are our biggest. Cool. So, have you been able to um, speak to any top or very influential artist, maybe a rapper, pop star, R&B superstar? You know. No, no, not yet. It's just so. I, just from you know being a year in business, um, we have reached out to a few, um, and they. I don't know. I guess they really don't understand the, the vision of it, right? Because they're, they're saying, like, everyone wants to be popular, like, on Spotify, YouTube, uh, Instagram. So they're, like, you know, the prison population really, you know, they, they're, like, they they paying it no mind. But they don't, what they don't realize is every year, hundreds of millions of dollars 
are being spent on music. And, you know, I don't want to, uh, I don't know, go into any type of conspiracy, but their music is selling inside the prison population, whether they know it or not. And I don't know if they're getting um, their royalties from that, but if you look on, if you, you know, if you have somebody inside the prison, you look on JPEG, their music is on JPEG. Now, I'm not sure who's getting the money for their music selling, but their music is on there. So it's like a disconnect with the more popular artists, and they're hard to reach, right? So you have to go through, like, their, uh, their team. And when I talk to a few team members, and they're just like, no. But what, like I said, what they don't realize is they're literally missing out on hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of dollars, mm-hmm. not getting inside the magazine and not letting people um, not, not allowing people to know that, hey, the music is on that JPEG kiosk. Okay, so if you say anything to them right now, what would you say? Um, to, to like a, a major artist? Yeah. I would tell them um, that it's a, it's a huge market. Um, I'll say, you know, even though you might not get publicity or be more, you know, become more popular for it, you will make a lot more money because inside the prisons, they don't do streaming. They do downloads and you get 80% for each um, album sold. So let's say your album is $10. You're getting $8 per album. Um, with streams, you might, I don't know, what was it, a million streams? You might get I don't know, 50 or 60, $100 or something like that, or a couple of thousand. So it's like, you know, if you if you sell, oh man, if you sell a million al- albums inside of the prison, you're getting 80%. So that's a lot of money. They're missing out on a lot of money. They just they just don't know about it. The download fetch more money than streaming music, right? Is that what you're trying to say? Right, right, right. They're they're buying downloads like they used to do on like iTunes and things like that. Okay. Um, can you mention a few artists you've been able to? talk to and they're willing to work with you um yeah it's just uh it's just a lot of <laughs> it's just a lot of independent artists i mean it's you know it's there's nobody you know it's, they're, they're just up and coming they realize that um they realize that the money is in the prison system so for instance like uh let's say meek mills meek mills just tweeted out a week ago that you know he wished he could get his songs on JPEG. But so with that, with like those mainstream artists, they're locked into these contracts. So they really don't get to determine where their music goes. Okay. Right. Like so but when Bobby Smart was when Bobby Smurder was talking about it, he's saying he wished he can go back to the independent route because he had just uh send the music straight through the prison system and, and don't have to worry about anything. What other aims do you have for the company? Um, so far as music, then we have the again, we have the magazine. So um there is a lot of influential things that come from inside of the prison. A lot of prisoners are running a lot of things that's outside of here, right? So I'll say a big chunk of the music industry is ran by somebody inside or have a lot of influence by somebody inside the prison population. Because once the prisoners hear about it, they call home and tell mm-hmm. their friends. Yeah. Interesting. Because you gotta think about it, all the all the the I don't I don't want I don't want to use this term, but like all the street hustlers and gangsters, they're locked most of them are locked up, right? Yeah, the OGs. Yeah. So the, their, their influence don't stop because they're locked up. They're still making calls and, you know, doing things like that. That's so true. I would, I, yeah, so I would tell them, like, and so when we feature um, somebody in the magazine, you know, it, it, it gets around the prison, like, okay, let's check out this artist. And then from the prisons, they call home and say, hey, and daughter just featured such and such. Y'all need to check him out. It's a big market. So where do you see the company in the next three, four, five years? Um, I believe that we're on the trajectory and the trend um, to where people are starting to take notice about the prison system and the music. 
So I say, and you know, Drake was his, one of his uh, one of his latest singles to talk about. You know, um, he has a line in there talking about J Face. So I think they're becoming more aware of it. So about yeah, three or four years, we'll be working with uh, the Drakes, the Kendrick Lamar's, the, the Big Shines, T, or T Grizzly already up on it, um, and like mainstream artists. I think that's where that's that's where we where we see ourselves at and you know everyone inside the prison population will have you know in thoughts and magazine and you know telling people about and things like that i think we will be like the go-to like the gatekeeper to get the music inside the prisons not only that but to get the right promotion for the magazine or for the music so it can make a lot more sales do you have any copy of the magazine with you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, here's a copy. Here's a. And uh, Delta. Yeah. It's it, nice. It, uh, yeah, it features like uh, you know, cars. Uh, the the latest shoes that came out, you know, so you can look at things, you know, uh, travel. Yeah. So, it's definitely a. Uh, it's a it's a it's to give it's to give the inmates you know some some positivity yeah. and some enlightenment. So is it a monthly based stuff or how do you yep. run it? Yep, it's a monthly it's a monthly subscription. So every month, um, okay. a new magazine goes out. I've seen people inside of prisons have two, three, four thousand songs downloaded, paid for. It. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's, that's that's like the norm because prison you might do 10, 15, 20 years. I've only only did three and a half years. I had close to six, seven hundred songs downloaded. And we talking anywhere from two dollars for a single, you might pay ten, fifteen dollars for an album. So again, the music is selling. Now where money going? I have no idea. But the independent artists know. So independent artists don't have to worry about um any major label or distribution going, you know, any issues with that. It's straightforward with me. We you get your music in there, you get 80%, you get paid out every month. It's a done deal. So what would you have for the youngins out there concerning prison life, you know, gun violence everywhere? It's crazy. I would say you really have to to one sit down somewhere. Um, I think the, the the biggest issue is, um, especially when I was growing up, I always wanted to be in the streets, but the streets is not giving you anything positive, right? Because it's you're you're looking at it from a negative aspect. You have the whole world ahead of you. You can you can travel the world. Um, you can really do great things but it has to be positive you have to take the negative aspect out of it yeah so for the youngins is is if if school's not your thing that's fine but you know idle time is a devil's workshop so i tell them to either you know do a school thing or, or find a trade or do an entrepreneur thing but especially like in, like i said every prison system is different but michigan michigan gives you the hardest time meaning that let's say this let's say me and the homeboy we want to rob somebody right yeah if my homeboy gets killed in the process i get charged with the murder right so a person we're trying to rob kills my homeboy so and i get charged with the murder so that's what a lot of young people is not is not realizing. It's the it's the magnitude of the crime. Like one guy I talked to that was incarcerated, um, he got locked up with, when he was seventeen. He got sentenced to twenty five years, and he said when he got sentenced, he didn't even know what twenty five years was. And so that's another thing. Like they're giving you hard time, especially in Michigan. In Michigan, you don't get uh, any type of good time. Meaning. Like some states that give you, if you do, if they give you 20 years, you only got to do like 70%, right? At that time. Yeah. Michigan don't have that. If they sentence you to 20 years, you're doing the whole 20. So oh, wow. 
Yeah, so that's one piece. The other piece is, like I said, knowing how much time the crime you're doing carries. So let's give another example of hanging with the wrong crowd. So if me and four other homeboys, we go and break into somebody's house, three of us is downstairs ramaging to the stuff, right? But one of the homeboys went upstairs to look for something else. Come to find out, he went upstairs and did sexual assault or kill somebody. Again, we ain't had nothing to do with that. But since we were there in the commission of a felony, we all get charged with the same crime he did. And we all looking at 30, 40, 50 years. Wow. So, yeah, I, I was seriously, you know, sit down, come up with a plan. And, and watch you hang with because you, you can get a lot of time. It, it's, it's easy. It's, it's just like that. You're looking at just a simple home invasion. That turned into, you know, armed robbery, murder, you know, sexual assault. And you just went in there to go steal something. So, yeah, you have to be careful with a couple of your people. Oh, thank you for that. I believe that there's, from I, I would double check but I'm pretty sure that there's no there's no podcast inside of the prison. So they do have music, but there's no podcast. So I think like us talking and hearing and them hearing other entrepreneurs talk, I think that would make a tremendous impact. Yeah, so it's really good to have you here. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you.